Good day everybody, once again we are back together, uh, welcome to our channel and if you are new to our channel please just hit that subscribe button, of course we are going to be your favorite maths and science channel, will be your plug when it comes to everything maths and science. Okay, and uh, for those of you who are um, you know, who are joining us for the first time, please just also hit that notification bell uh, just to remind you every time we are posting a new lesson. And uh, by the way, if you need to get in touch with us for any needs when it comes to maths and science, uh, our email address is info at mlungisingosi.co.za. All right, so today we are still looking at uh, Euclidean geometry. We did say that when you're looking at Euclidean geometry, we need to always make sure that we give it the respect that it deserves. So what we're going to do is we're just going to track back a little bit and look at the things that we need to do, uh, build it up from there. Just make sure that uh, we perfect everything. It's Remember, it's one body of knowledge at the end of the day. Um, it's just that it's segmented into different grades. Uh, however, we need all of the knowledge uh, cumulatively so that we can be able to answer questions adequately in this section. Okay, so... Uh, the first thing that I want us to talk about today is quadrilaterals, which means quads, four-sided figures. Um, the first one that I want to talk about is um, the parallelogram, okay? So let's talk about the properties of a parallelogram, okay? You're going to need all of these things, all right? So as we said, we're just going to make sure that you know all of this. So what do we know about a parallelogram? So when we draw a palm, right, in this case, so first we know that the opposite sides are first of all equal and they are parallel, okay? And secondly, okay, so we know those sides are equal and they are also parallel to each other, all right? And then um, what also do we know? We know that the opposite angles of a parallelogram are also equal. So which means this angle here, so let's give it a, a name A, B, C, D. So I know that angle A would be equal to angle D, okay? But as well, we know that angle C should be equal to angle B. So the opposite angles are equal, all right? So those two angles are equal there. Right, and then just another thing to keep in mind. Now, the moment we draw what we call diagonals inside of a parallelogram, so if we draw those diagonals there, right, what do we know about the bi uh, di diagonals? First of all, we know that the diagonals bisect each other, so meaning that they cut each other in half. So that side should be equal to this side. But as well, it means that uh, the blue side, so that side should also be equal to that side. Of course, you know, outside of the normal things that we know, we know that uh, these angles here, let me take this angle over there and that angle over there. We know that they are vertically opposite to each other. Okay, so therefore they would be equal. So the opposite, interior opposite angles are equal, okay, as well. Uh, as that angle over there. Now, let, let me just make it into a different color. All right, so those angles there should also be equal. So the opposite angles, uh, the interior opposite angles are also uh, equal. All right, now, that uh, those are the properties of a parallelogram. Now, let's talk about uh, the next four-sided figure. All right, so the second... Um, diagram is a rectangle. So what do we know about a rectangle? Again, uh, the rectangle is a kind of a parallelogram. The only difference this time around, uh, so all the properties of a parallelogram uh, would be applicable. So if I were to have a rectangle, I know that the opposite sides are equal and, um, uh, and they are parallel as well. So I know that the opposite sides are equal and parallel. Uh, but in this case, also, I know that uh, on that side, in fact, I should have actually done that with a different color. Okay, I know that on that side as well, uh, these these two sides, the opposite sides. Okay, let's give it a name again. Uh, let's say this is side AB and CD. 
So I know that BC is parallel to AD, but as well I know that AB is also parallel to CD. Uh, but what we also know is that uh, the opposite sides uh, are also equal. So it means that BC is equal to AD uh, as well as AB equal to um, uh, DC as well. Okay, so the opposite sides are equal. Now, in this case, remember that the interior angles this time around are going to be 90 degrees. So that, that's the only difference uh, when it comes to the kind of parallelogram that it is. Okay, not only are the interior angles or the opposite angles equal, in this case, they are equal, uh, but they are also 90 degrees. So all the interior angles are 90 degrees. But now, once we draw a... Okay, let's draw the diagonals inside. Okay, so if we draw diagonals inside the parallelogram, we know that the uh, diagonals uh, bisect each other. But here's the difference once again. The diagonals bisect each other, but they are also equal. Okay, so which means that all the diagonals inside are actually equal. So uh, this guy would be equal to that guy would be equal to this guy and would also be equal to this guy. But of course, uh, we also do know that the, uh, the angles, um, you know, uh, the opposite angles, right, are also um, equal, okay, vertically opposite. And in this case, if I took this guy and that guy, uh, they are also equal to each other. All right, so please keep that in mind, all right? Please remember these are the properties of a rectangle, all right? And we are simply going to move on to the next one. All right, so the next figure is what we call a rhombus, okay? So first of all, um, I want you to think of a rhombus as a kind of square that is somewhat skew. So if you think about it, uh, now, in this case, we would have all sides would be equal so it means if i have a b c and d okay so in this case uh in fact i should have actually written it better okay so if i have a b c and d all right so in this case i know that side a b would be equal to side b c would be equal to side c d and would also be equal to side a d right and then the second thing is that, uh, once again, the opposite sides, the interior opposite angles, rather, are also equal, okay? Um, oh, actually, I should have also mentioned that the opposite uh, angles are parallel, uh, opposite sides, rather, are parallel. So not only are the sides equal, but in this case, the opposite sides are also parallel. So let's, that guy would be uh, parallel to that guy. Uh, and of course, BC would also be parallel to AD, okay? Right, so those two sides, um, opposite uh, sides are parallel, all right? And then we know opposite angles, okay? Interior opposite angles are equal, so we know that angle B would be equal to angle D, as well as angle A would also be equal to angle C, all right, so in this case, if that's x, that would also be x, all right? And then now let's talk about, um, in this case, when we've got diagonals again, okay? So if we draw diagonals inside, now one thing that I want you to note about a rhombus is that the diagonals, okay, yes, they do bisect each other, okay? So we know this guy. And, you know, let's let's give this a name. Let's say this is E over here. So I know AE should be equal to EC, right? But as well, it means that BE would be equal to uh, ED. So those two would be equal as well. Okay. But um, just something that is quite interesting that they also form 90 degrees there. So um, at the point of uh, uh, intersection, the, the diagonals form 90 degree angles. Of course, if that angle is 90 degrees, of course, it makes all the other angles 90 degrees in there.
All right. Yeah. So I want you to think of a rhombus. Uh, you know, I've seen in the past exams, you know, when they talk about a rhombus, then everyone just thinks, oh, I don't know what that looks like. Okay. Just think of a square in this case that is somewhat skewed. Okay. But of course, uh, the angles are not 90 degrees. Okay. Right. And we are going to now move on to the square. All right. So let's talk about the square. All right. So first of all, um, so a square is a type of rhombus. Okay. Uh, if you remember all the properties of a rhombus. Now, uh, just something to keep in mind. In this case, we know that for a square, all sides are equal. All right, just like a rhombus, we know all sides are equal. And in this case, we know that all angles. Now, unlike the rhombus, we said opposite uh, angles are equal. But in this case, we know that all the interior angles are actually 90 degrees. So all sides equal, all angles, uh, interior angles equal. But remember that all sides are also parallel. Okay, the opposite sides are parallel. So in this case, just remember that uh, uh, if we say this is A, B, C, and D, so that means that uh, side A, B would be parallel to side D, C. And of course, we know that uh, uh, as well, we know that uh, B, C, would be parallel also to uh, AD, right? So that's for the square. Now, um, something very, very particular about a square is that when we now draw the diagonals in the square, uh, just some things to note there, okay? Once we draw the diagonals in the square, just note that the diagonals, first of all, are equal, okay? So meaning BD, should be equal to AC. And what does that mean? It therefore means if I were to call this E in here, okay, let, um, if I were to call this E, then it means that when they bisect each other, the, the, the diagonals bisect each other, so that means that this angle here should be equal to that angle over there, okay? Uh, but it also means that this angle should also be equal to uh, I mean the side rather, AE should be equal to EC um, and BE should be equal to uh, ED. So all the sides, okay, uh, um, in this case are, are, are equal, okay. So um, yeah, you can see what I'm trying to say over there. So BE is equal to ED as well as AE is equal to a, uh, EC, but it means that all of them are actually equal to each other. Now, one also one very particular thing about a square is that the diagonals bisect the angles as well. So what that means, I want you to please note this. I'm going to take, a, you know, uh, yeah, just a bright color. So if you look at this diagonal over here, now it simply means those two angles in there should be equal. So if I take... Uh, this angle here, the diagonals bisect the angles as well. So that means if I'm to call this angle here X, that should be X as well, okay? Uh, but it also means that, uh, now if you think about it, okay, all these angles in here should actually be equal in a sense, okay? Right, um, so in this case, uh, we just remember that to be the case. Um, and yeah, that is uh, in in so far as the square is concerned. Just near yeah, something to remind ourselves as well. In fact, I forgot to mention that about the rhombus uh, when we did the rhombus. Uh, just note that also the diagonals there bisect the angles as well. Okay, so that means the angles inside there uh, should be equal. Okay, so that angle should those angles should be equal. Those angles should be equal in there. Okay, so this angle, if we call it X, that should be X. If we call this one Y, that should be Y as well. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I, I hope you, you get the point uh, in this case. So that should be, those angles should bisect each other. Okay, and so that should also be the case uh, with a square. Now, the beautiful thing about the square is that, I mean, remember you are between parallel lines. So that means if I call this guy X there, 
so what it means is that this one becomes x that becomes x but if you think about it that should also be x that should be x that should be x and that should be x so in that case it means that all the angles uh, inside are actually equal to each other okay right um so that is it when it comes to the square i hope i've mentioned everything all right let's move on uh, to the next figure all right so the next figure let's talk about a kite so in this case when we have a kite okay so a kite would look something like this okay uh, of course, mine uh, just looks a little bit skewed, but I'm sure you'll get the idea that I'm trying to present. Okay, so first of all, what do we know about a kite? We know that one pair of adjacent sides are equal. So if I were to call this A, B, C, and D, I want you to note that A, B, uh, and B, C are adjacent sides. They're just next to each other, and so those are equal but also we know that AD should be equal to CD. So those sides are equal as well, right? And then what we also know is that if we were to draw, okay, uh, there we go. So now we've got uh, diagonals that are inside of a kite. Okay, so what we, uh, we, we know about uh, the diagonals is that they bisect each other perpendicularly. Um, did I actually mention that about a, a, a square? Uh, I don't think I did. Uh, remember that they also, the diagonals also bisect each other perpendicularly. And so is the case with a rhombus as well. Okay. Uh, I think I mentioned it for the rhombus, but not for the square. Right. Just keep in mind. So in this case, we know that the diagonals bisect each other perpendicularly. But what it means also is that um, so if we were to take that as, uh, let's say, side E, okay, so let's take that as E. Now note that um, only one pair, um, uh, uh, in this case, would be equal. So in this case, I'd say AE would be equal to EC, okay? So I'm doing that in a different color so that we can uh, see there. So it's only just one pair of diagonals that would be bisected. So in this case, um, AE would be equal to uh, EC, right? Um, just one other thing to remember. Remember that once uh, this becomes sort of like a, an, an axis of symmetry of sorts. Okay, so I've just erased it there. Okay, so this becomes like an axis of symmetry of sorts. So if you fold uh, your kite around the axis of symmetry, which is this guy over here, BD, then what happens is that you get two sides that are actually exactly the same. They lie on, on, on each other. Um, you know, they are uh, exactly equal to each other or rather, yeah, those two triangles therefore become uh, congruent. If you remember uh, our analogy on or our uh, teaching about congruency, so you get two congruent uh, triangles. All right. Uh, just one other thing to keep in mind there that the diagonals not only do they uh, bisect uh, one side, but in this case, they also bisect the angles as well. So what I do know is that this angle here uh, would be equal to that angle over there. Okay. So if you were to call it B1 and B2, so B1 and B2 would be equal. But similarly, it means that D1 and D2 uh, should also be equal. Okay. Right. So, um, I think I've mentioned uh, everything uh, in terms of a kite. Let me see. Okay, yeah, we mentioned the fact. Okay, right. I think we are uh, okay in so far as the kite is concerned. Right, now let's go to our next diagram. All right, so the last one is a trapezium. Okay, so what we do know about a trapezium, uh, it doesn't have all the other properties, uh, but simply... A trapezium just has two sides uh, that are parallel. Um, in fact, uh, if you just note there, none of the other uh, properties, you know, the, the other ones kind of share similar properties. Uh, but in this case, uh, with the trapezium, all that we simply know is just that one side or, or uh, you know, only one 
pair uh, um, is uh, is parallel. All right. So if we're to talk about A, B, C, and D, then we know that A, B is parallel to C, D, but none of the other properties uh, apply in this particular case. All right. So what I want to do quickly is to look at cyclic quads. This is what we now remember. We are getting into, uh, you know, um, yeah, uh, in, in the gist of things in terms of uh, uh, Euclidean geometry. So I want us to look at properties of cyclic quads. But of course, I'm going to mention that, uh, you know, once I get to the theorems, um, I'm going to uh, get a bit more specific about that one. All right. So what is a cyclic quad? So a cyclic quad is a very special quad, uh, quadrilateral. In this case, it is a quad wherein all four vertices, okay, remember what a vertex is, okay? Um, so in this case, uh, one of the, where the two lines meet, right? So all four of the vertices touch the circumference of a circle. So we call it a cyclic quad because if we were to draw a circle and draw uh, any quad inside, now it doesn't have to be um, uh, perfect like that, but can you see each of the vertices of the quad touch the circumference of a circle, okay? So now we're going to talk later on about, uh, you know, the theorems thereof. But you know what, I just wanted to get ahead of myself uh, just a little bit. So in this case, when we have a cyclic quad, what's so special about a cyclic quad? Now, not all of the ones that I've mentioned before are actually cyclic quads, okay? Um, in this case, what would be special about a cyclic quad? First of all, we say that uh, for a cyclic quad, we know that the opposite sides, now please listen carefully, if I say, well, this is A, B, C, and D. So the first thing that I would know, um, so those are uh, my four, you know, my, my third, fourth, and fifth theorem. Uh, in this case, I've just, I'm just going to mention it without necessarily mentioning the theorem. But I know that the opposite sides are supplementary. What does that mean? If, it means that if I were to take angle B, okay, plus angle D, in this case would be, both of them would be equal to 180. So that's a cyclic quad, right? So B plus D has to be equal to 180. And in that case, I would therefore know that this would be a cyclic quad, okay? And then um, what also I would know, let's say that's angle X and that's angle Y. Now we say the exterior angle of a, tri of a, a cyclic quad. So if I were to extend that line, uh, a, B, D, let's call that E there. So if I were to take the angle outside of the cyclic quad, look at this, this angle over there should be equal to the opposite interior angle, okay? So look at this, this angle here, all right? Uh, which one is the opposite interior? So you go to, the, uh, uh, to this angle over there and you say the opposite one, in this case, so which means this would be equal to Y because we've called this angle Y as well. So remember that the exterior angle of a cyclic quad is equal to the opposite interior angle. Now I'm going to call this uh, D1 and D2. And so it means that D2 should be equal to, uh, in this case, angle B. And all that we simply say is that, um, sorry, the exterior angles, exterior angle uh, of a cyclic quad. Okay. Right, I did say that I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Uh, I didn't give the reason there. B plus D would be equal to 180, right? Remember, we said those are opposite angles uh, of a cyclic quad. So, these would be opposite angles of a cyclic quad. And of course, once we've got those opposite angles, any examiner knows that they are supplementary. Okay, so once I've said that, of course, the assumption is that they're supplementary. Okay, right. Um, you know, so if they wanted you to prove if a quad is a cyclic quad, this would be the first way to do it. 
okay, uh, to check if the opposite sides are supplementary. Um, if you can't that way, the second way to prove it uh, would be the exterior angle being equal to the opposite interior angles, okay? Um, the third way uh, would be if, okay, so if I were to draw, uh, you know, diagonals in there. Um, so now, in this case, if they are, uh, if an angle or, or if angles are, ups, are subtended by the same chord in this case, uh, so if we take chord AD, in fact, you see that I've gotten ahead of myself because I haven't even defined what a chord is. And we'll do that in our next lesson. So in this case, then I know if this angle here would be equal to that angle there, all right? Because they are both subtended by the same chord. In this case, therefore, I would know this is a, a, a cyclic quad. So if I were to take, let's say, B1 and C1, okay? So those would be equal. And so I'd be able to conclude that that is a cyclic quad, okay? Right, so I want to leave my lesson there for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to now pick up. I'm going to start from theorem one um, and obviously uh, up to theorem nine for the grade 11. And we're going to pick up from, uh, you know, uh, the other theorems for grade 12. And in this case, we're going to consolidate everything together just to make sure that you can now answer questions on geometric riders, okay? So otherwise, uh, I want to leave it there, ladies and gents. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Um, please hit that notification bell as well, okay? And please recommend our channel to as many people as possible. Tell them this is your favorite plug when it comes to maths and science. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.